Good morning, everybody. Welcome this morning to our uh, English Sunday worship service. Um, so nice to see everybody here this morning. Uh, let's begin worship by seeing the collect. call to worship is taken from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's continue worship with a word of prayer. Father God, we want to give you thanks this morning for bringing us all, all of us here. We know that you are good and your love endures forever and, and that your faithfulness continues through all generations. As we worship you this morning, please have your spirit be amongst us and open up our hearts and minds so we're ready, ready to receive your word, listen to your words, and and act in according to, to your will. This morning, we also want to lift up Pastor Felix to you as he's going to deliver your message to us this morning. And he's here. We know that he's in pain and he's uh, recovering and, and he's still here to serve you. Just want you to give him comfort and, and give him peace and, and have your healing hands be upon him uh, as he continue to do your work for your, your people. So we want to lift up uh, the following time up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, everyone. Let's all stand and praise our God together.
Jesus.
seated. Yes. Okay. Um, not for a moment will you forsake me. Uh, I guess um, that is a good verse for us to remember. Uh, I talked to someone like um, a couple of days ago. Is I talking about like how was your spiritual life, and because of the land was done. And then the teens conference was done, and for sure the Ali Thea retreat was done. A little bit feedback, right? Okay, maybe too close. Okay, not good. So um, the that person is saying like, oh, it's like my spiritual high was l like leaving me already. Like I, I, my my relationship with Christ was not that good now. Uh, yes, we need like some time. Um, to go to a retreat, we need some time to go to the conference. But just like the song we sung, like, not for a moment, He will never forsake us. He will always be here waiting for us, no matter what. Yeah, I, I hurt my, my feet, and, um, and for this week, it's so hard. Um, I, I lie down on my bed for like almost a whole week, and like I make a trip to my bathroom is hard. So I don't want to go to a bathroom. I don't drink water and like, like that kind of thing, right? Um, and then I cannot really like, but God is good because the sermon he gave me is like from last week already. <laughs> he knew I will be like hurt in this week. So I don't need to put so much effort into the sermon. And also for the Sunday school, I don't know why I can Google, no, I mean, in my Google Drive, I have a questions about like today's like <laughs> Sunday school. So everything is like well prepared. God is so good. I just want to ask you a question before I pray for you guys. Yes, summer is coming. Yes, we are excited or we are not excited at all because of exam is coming, right? But no matter what, uh, what is your relationship with Christ? He is a good God. He will never forsake you. And are you having a good time with him? Do you have some time that you will separate? Some time, maybe just five minutes. Yeah, maybe we, we, we did that before when we are like in a spiritual high atmosphere, when we are in a revival kind of atmosphere. But now, maybe after so many things is passing, we forget about him. We don't have time. We don't have things. We have everything back to routine. But he's a good God. He, he provides, he, he taking care of us, he protects us. And how about you? Do you have a good relationship with him? Just go to, like, he's waiting. He's maybe like, just like me, like, uh, cannot move around. Maybe, no, he can move around. But he's waiting for you. Okay, so um, you don't need to answer my question. Just close your eyes and we pray, okay? Let us pray um, for God. Father God, we just come into your presence. We know that. Not for a moment that you will like for, forsake us. You are always here for us. In the scripture, it said, if God is for us, no one can against us. We just need to like be closer to you. Maybe just like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day to make some communication with you, to read the word of God. And then our relationship can be built. Lord, we know that in this, in this society, we are always busy. In, for the high school student, like so many exams, maybe exam month is coming. And for the, for the university student, maybe we are so excited about our long summer and we may work we may like a plan to travel or whatever but somehow everything is because of you lord let us to like pause a little bit and think about you you are so good to us you are worthy of all our praises let us to like focus not just on sunday morning but really on every single day every single moment 
you will not forsake us, but sometimes we forsake you. We forget about you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to understand your will, understand your heart, and understand your love. Your love is unconditional. Even though we forsake, we forget, we, we, we don't forgive others, you are still with us. You want us to be closer to us. Help us, Lord. Let us to change. Let us to confess our sin. Let us to come closer to you every single day. We, 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 we especially pray for the exam person, like people who, who are going to have exam. We pray for wisdom. Uh, cast them all the work, cast out all their worries because you are with them. You will give them everything they need. You may already give them all the time that they need. Maybe they waste it, but let them to like change and still have time to study. Let them to do it. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Today's scripture reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. Praise, to, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which reduces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also do you share in our comfort. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sean. So, very interesting. Uh, we just want to be comfortable. I'm so comfortable today. <laughs> I can sit here and then preach the <laughs> uh, sermon to you. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the scripture is said in the beginning, in verse uh, 3, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort. This is the truth, okay? If you read this in, you, in, the, in the scripture here, you can see the God of all comfort, which means you cannot find other places to get comfort. Do you understand that? This is important, just this one. Uh, you, you forget every other stuff, right? Remember the God of all comfort. But interestingly, I heard there's a word in, uh, I, this is my, my first time, I don't know, I, maybe uh, the, there was a, word, a term called comfort food. <laughs> so this is my comfort food. I like yam cha, I like to go to the Chinese tea. Uh, so every single time I, 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 I will do a dim sum, different thing, right? We find comfort with different places like food, entertainment, and other stuff. And we want comfort. We don't want to suffer. No one wants to suffer. No one wants to be on a wheelchair, right? No one wants to, like... Uh, but then we find other stuff. For example, uh, we don't want to change. We don't want to have any challenge in life, right? And we, uh, we will never pray... We only pray for a smooth life, right? We will ne never want to pray for, for example, if we're going to have a, um, uh, a picnic, for example, if we have a picnic, or, okay, maybe a travel, maybe better. If we go to a travel, we will pray for, when we're going to the custom, we'll be very smooth. We don't want to be searched. We don't want to be like a question, right? We will never, don't, we don't want to be challenged. Right? We don't want to be challenged. We won't, don't want hiccups. We don't want problems in life. We don't want trouble. And because of that, somehow we create our comfort zone. And we don't want to leave that comfort zone. 
this picture is very interesting because when you see that, you can see like everything inside the chromosome is so so dull, but out, outside is is like stars and everything. It's like the good thing. But even though, maybe even though you know, when you step out of your comfort zone, there will be so good, so bright future, but you don't want it. You don't even want it. In the Bible, there was a very good example for this. It's Exodus 16. The Israelite, they are slaves. And they, God, God called Moses to come and then to set, uh, to set them free, right? You know the story. And everything is okay, and then they are coming out, but then they have no food to eat, they have no meat to eat, they have no, not enough water, that kind of thing, but God provides everything, right? And then, but they, one time they, they crumble, they complain, they said, if only we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. They are slaves. They have, they, they are, sometimes when, when we are in a comfort zone as a slavery, we lower, lower our standard. And then we thought, like, those pot of meat is what we want. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? That, that is important. We, we, we think that is the comfort zone. We don't want to go out. And then because going out is challenge. Going out is hiccup. Going out is like trouble in life. And then we just want to be safe. Why? Because we just want to be comfortable. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? This is like they want to go back to the Egypt as a slavery, and they don't want to be free. Crazy. When we saw that, it's like crazy. But think about yourself. Sometimes, even we know we are sinning, we know it is sinning, and then we just feel like it's okay. I don't want to be have a breakthrough. I don't want. I don't want like, like to be changed, and then we lower lower our standard, and then we feel like that is okay, but that is not okay. In because you know, according to the uh, same chapter, there's like scheme of Satan's in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Um, outwit is like, take advantage of us, right? And we are not like unaware of his schemes, then he will not never, he's unable to take advantage of us. But somehow we don't know his scheme though. And one of the big scheme that the devil used is called the complacency. And that is what I'm talking about now. Complacency, we feel it's okay. Everything is okay. This is not, um, this is from the Google, a feeling of calm satisfaction with your own abilities and situation that prevents you from trying harder. That means self-satisfaction, everything is okay. Everything is like normal now, why change? Right? Complacency is the devil's scheme. Just like we come to the church, I'm checking the attendance, not, not just a lumber. Every single day on the Sunday worship, attendance is around 47, 48, 46, 45. Yeah, everyone is coming back, everything is okay. But it's not about the lumber. It's really about our life. It's really about uh, you have a relationship with Christ. If we are coming here, we feel like you are a Christian or you feel like hey, I'm fulfilled something and then I'm okay. No, it's not okay. I, I remember like one um, couple, like before the, uh, before the, what is that called? The, the, the Alithia retreat. Like I, I have a sermon. I really feel like, English service is not okay. If you remember what I said, and then someone come up to me like, hey, what, what do you mean by that? Like, uh, but we, we, we go to there a little bit later. Um, the, you know, complacency is very like a, a devil scheme. We thought like he's lying, he's stealing, and yes, he will doing that. But somehow he make us feel comfortable and you never change. He make us like, hey, um, Going to share the gospel to others is so challenging. 
It makes us like, hey, then don't do it. Maybe other people can have like a better gift to do it. No need to, right? And then you don't do it. And then you don't need to pray. You don't do it, right? That kind of thing is like make us comfortable. Yes, we don't do anything. It's comfortable. But then we are not growing. In Matthew 12, there's a story. Jesus talked about this. He said, when an, in spirit, an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through the places seeking rest and does not fear, find it. Then he said, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be uh, with the wicked generations. That person, he has a, his impure spirit and left, but then he did not have anything inside. Everything is like, oh, now it's normal. Now it's okay. Now it's like, and then other worse spirit came. Interestingly, if you check with different um, uh, ver version of the, of the Bible in here. In verse 44, it said, then it said, I will return to the house I left. But in ESV, this is my, my, my version, <laughs> ESV it said, I will return to my house from which I came. What is the difference? The difference is like the, that Satan, that spirit, that, not Satan, but the, that impure spirit saying, I will return to my house. That is like, that, that is the, the, the main problem. Who owns the house? We just don't care our life is not okay because our life is no longer lived because Christ lives in us. Our life belongs to Christ. And it does not belong to others. If our life belongs to Christ, no impure spirit can come. Right? But if we think it is okay, everything is okay now, I'm going to the fellowship, I'm coming Sunday, I even go to the Sunday school class, not everyone's coming. Right? <laughs> and I'm a good student, I'm like, I, I pray every single meal. But there's, there can be more. Right? You feel comfortable, and that is a scheme of complacency. That is like you feel like, okay, but there's so much more. You have to change. Life is not like just like this. And then in verse 4 in the, today's passage, he said, Who comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any troubles with the comfort we ourselves receive from, our, from God. So, very, very complicated to, to, for me to read. But it said, so that we can comfort those. So, this is like interesting. This is it's talking about a reason for why we are suffer. I, I, why, why you don't want suffer? Because you don't like it, right? But when there's suffer, we will be comforted by God because God is God of all comforts. And we will be comforted by Him and him only, kind of, right? And, and then he said, hey, this is the reason. But listen, this is one of the reasons, not the reason of why we are going to suffer. This is only one of the reasons. The the, one of the reasons is like, so God will comfort us in all the trouble, then we can go and comfort others. Why we are, why we are, we are suffering? Because God will comfort us, and then that comfort can go to others. But this is like one of the reasons, not the reason for all the suffering, though, okay? So we have to read the whole, 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 whole because so many people uh, don't want to be suffer. When I say, hey, if you suffer, don't worry. When you get a comfort, you can comfort others. Then it is not a good, like, um, uh, advice to those who is suff in suffering, right? But this is one of the reasons, right? I remember 20-some years ago, long, long, long time, when I was in my hometown, um, my, my church has a pastor, 
and he need to he needs to leave the church. And you know, when a pastor needs to leave a church, it will create problems no matter what. When no matter it's like being fired or he just like I just quit my job, I, I want to leave. When when a pastor leaves, there will always like problem happen because someone will support him, someone will not support him, and then there will be an argue. And then at that time, 20 some years ago, one pastor from my home church left for some reason, and then our church split. And then the problem for us, for our family especially, is because my, 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 my wife is, like, is in, on the board of director at that time. And, and then it was like a problem because yeah, he, she knows some stuff and then like, there's a like problem, like it's hard, harder, very hard. And then God is good. Yeah, there's a comfort. There's like so many times like people praying and then I, I read the Bible, especially I read the first Corinthians. I remember those times I read the first Corinthians. Wow, I realized why churches, I thought it's like very good places when I was younger, right? <laughs> There's still good places. Don't worry, don't leave, okay? But then I, I thought, hey, why there's a, so much problem in the first Corinthian church, in the Corinthian church? What is happening? And then when I'm reading the first Corinthian, uh, the book of first Corinthians, and then I realize, I understand, wow, everyone is a sinner, including myself. And then those comfort, seven years ago, I came to TCMC, TCMC just like a phasing, like a similar, I don't know, like problem or something. And then I, I knew what is going on in people's hearts somehow. And I guess so that I can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that I myself receive from God. Somehow it's like this. Somehow we don't understand why we suffer. Somehow we don't know why. But somehow it's like it's for others. Always for others. So don't be self-centered. Don't just think about your world is like yours. It's always interrelated. When we go into the uh, other scripture, you can see more. And then in verse 5, it says, For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Some of the scripture, you know, we don't like. This is one of them, Right? You don't like the scripture. It's like it doesn't, you don't understand or you don't, it doesn't make sense or it is not fitting in your theology, right? And then this one is like because we don't like, because everyone just wants to be comfortable, including myself too, right? I just want to be comfortable too. And, and then, but it said, we share abundantly, not the grace, but in the suffering of Christ. So if you never suffer, you are not with Christ somehow. You are not defending him. You are not with him that much. If you are always like comfortable. Yeah, it's so different. Um, why we are always have, have uh, suffering, according even to uh, John, he said, I have told you these things, Jesus said, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. We will have trouble in our workplace. Yeah, everyone will have troubles in the workplace, right? If you work, you will have problems. You have trouble. You will do something. You, you may miss something. Someone may do something to you. Uh, some people, like, you know, you know, you will have in this world. But the thing is, in Him, in Jesus, in God, we will have peace. He is the God of all comfort. So when you have trouble, go to God better than go to other people, right? Um, and you, those trouble can, can help you out. Um, those trouble can help you out in the, in, in after, right? So I remember I, I'm serving in two churches in this 17 years. <laughs> the first church, I was suffer so much actually. In that 10 years, it's so hard for me. It is so hard to, to me for, I cannot, 
I cannot describe fully to you guys, but because <laughs> it is so hard. It's so hard. And I'm a, like a new pastor. And, and, but then when I come these seven years after the beginning of everything, TCMC become like, I cannot say a paradise, but it become very comfort, comfortable to me. Comparing, comparing, com comparing thing with my like a previous church, it is very good. Everyone is good, nice. Like when I was like uh, someone, we were like uh, doing a wheelchair for me, and <laughs> everything is like so good, you know. But you know, but somehow because of that, I think it's not okay. Because in last ten years, I, no, I mean seventeen years ago. Uh, my spiritual life was like, yes, very challenging, but I'm so close to God. I'm so close. I, I, I have no one to, to, to help me, but God is always there. And he rise up, especially at the last three years, he rise up so many people, so many prayer group to pray with me. And God is so good. And, and at least, uh, at, at last, you know, I, I got shinko and then like problem happened and then I, I leave and then I come to here. But when I came here, I, and everyone is so nice, and you guys are good, good, good group. And, but then, a couple, yeah, right, right before the Alithia retreat, I said, I preach, I feel like it is not okay. We are, we are just sitting here. We are not like moving. We are not okay. We are not really thinking about God. We are not close to Him, right? And I, um, you know, I, I was feeling like I'm just like a revelation. Remember this, like, a, I, I guess it's a Ephesian, like the, the, the church of Ephesian, yes? And, and then it said, uh, Jesus is like blaming this church, saying, because you are lukewarm, okay? What was the problem about lukewarm? You know, when I'm drinking water, I don't like hot water, I don't like cold water, and I want lukewarm water, right? But then in here, he said, oh, you are neither hot nor cold. I'm about to speak, speak you out of my mouth. So what is the problem? It's like you need to know the context about it's a spring water, okay? Spring water, if it is hot, it can heal, right? And if it is cold, it can be drank, okay, at that time. So lukewarm is like, according to there, according to the context, is useless. Somehow, when we're feeling comfortable, complacency, and then everything is like, is like, okay, and then we become lukewarm. We become like no feeling. We just come to the church. We just come and go, Yes, we talk to our own friends. We don't want to challenge ourselves. We, we don't know everyone in here, but we don't care because we just know, like, oh, I just come and then, like, sit, maybe, like, listen to, I know Pastor Fee is okay, and then I just listen to him. No, it's not okay. It, you have to, like, expand from your comfort zone, right? You have to know. You have to learn how to care about others, how to care, how to love others, and how to pray for others, right? And, and I remember uh, I have a meal with uh, Pastor Kyle before the retreat, Alithia retreat, uh, because I asked him, like, hey, you come and help, help me out to, like, and uh, I, I serve, I, I pay him a very good meal, no, not very, just a like Korean meal. And then um, I, he asked me, hey, what do you want to, um, in the Alithia retreat, what, what, what do you want to happen? And then I said right away, I want to be half a revival among the teenagers. That is important to have a revival. That means you are on fire with God again. To have a revival, that means you are closer to Him again. That is very, very important to our life. Yeah, for Alicia, I, the teenagers, they have a revival. I can, I can say that. Yeah, but for the rest of us, Maybe some of the university, university, university students just came back. Maybe you have so much challenge in your life, right? Maybe some of the young adults, they have like working for so hard, don't want to, really want to go back to school or whatever. Or some adult here, like, you know, you know your life, right? But the revival is so important for us to know him, 
to be closer to God. It's so important. And, and God listen to prayer. Keep praying. Yeah. Revival will come to your life. But yet, as I mentioned in the pastoral prayer, it can only maybe happen like two weeks and then it's gone. Right? So keep on fighting, keep on like searching, keep on, be, keep on like going closer to God. Almost done, okay? So in uh, six, it said, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. It's talking about Paul and the Corinthian church. Uh, it's talking about their relationship. So it is like very close relationship. Like when Paul or his like teams is distressed, and then or if they are comfort or they are not happy, that is like very related. You know, like like church, body of Christ, we are all related. So someone, someone have problem. If you care about that, those people, you you guys are related. You know, you. Um, this is the church. This is the kind of the foundation of the church. Everything should be related. You are not alone. You are not just there and then sit here. And, or you are not just, oh, I find my friend's group and that's it. No, it is the whole church stuff. Everything is related to each other. But I'm not saying like I'm like Paul and then when I'm distressed or like then you, no, not like this. But the thing is like uh, we can help each other. I remember I, I, I supposed to go to the re church retreat site visit. I supposed to drive a car. But then when I was uh, going, coming back, because I changed my snow tire, my winter tire myself. Uh, I'm not a mechanic, but I, I changed it like not very proper maybe. So I came back here and, and I tightened it, but I using too much force, so I broke one of the one of the um, the school. Okay, it's broke and then it came out, and I was scared because I just fixed my car with a thousand dollar with like one sm uh, small motor uh, in here that may make my chair to go back. It cost me thousands, just like small thing, right? I was so scared. That thing maybe cost me like 3,000 or something. I was like so scared. And then when, when the other people came back, a pastor and other people, and then they prayed for me, and then um, I, was, I, I was like a little bit relief. And then, then after the prayer, another guy came. And then it's one of the brothers. And then he said, hey, I just did the same. I have the same experience. And let me call my mechanic. He will come and help you out. And he just call. Oh, don't worry. It's just like a couple hundred dollars. You know, I, I, I will feel like, yes, the church is like really like uh, related. And then even the problem is related. But, but that is like maybe too much. But this is like something that some, somehow our problem, like others can be comforted, right? And, but the main thing in here is not the, for the reason why we are suffer, like, or do we need comfort. I guess the main thing is hope. We need hope. The most important thing of our life is hope. You know, if you don't have hope in your life, everything is not okay. If you have a hope out there, you know sometime there will be better, something will be better then everything will be, will be changed. That is our, the hope is so important for us. It's not about a reason why we suffer. It's not because of, um, like, we need a comfort even though. But we need to know, like, if we have hope, we can endure no matter what. That is an important part of our faith. I remember one scripture, this is the final scripture, is that in Hebrew 12 two. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, before Jesus, he endured the cross. You know, cr the cross, yeah, the cross be be behind me, you know, is a symbol for glory now, right? But at that time, the cross is like suffer, so much suffer. 
the person who hang there for hours, right? And then he cannot breathe. He needs to move himself. And then the, the heart will be broken. And then the, the blood will, will drink. And then we will, will be dripping again. And then until it's no more. And then they die. Right? It is brutal. It is not easy. And Jesus knows he is going there. How can he endure? It's because of the hope. Because of that hope before him, he know after that everything changed. And we need that. I don't know whether you are suffer now or you are in a, in a problem or you worry about or fear about something. But there will be hope in Christ always. At the end, everything will be all right. Even Jesus is said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. The cross is hard. Right? I think we don't need to, we all no need to endure the cross, right? But we have to face our own challenge, our own trouble, our own problems. We have to. Or we just stay in the comfort zone and we will never grow. When we face, it is hard. But because of Jesus, because of the hope of the glory of Jesus, we will always going through those times. So let me pray for us. Father God, we thank you so much. You know that we all just want to be comfort because we, it is easy. Life can be easy, smooth, and it is happy. But yet, you know, we should be uh, thinking about um, we should be thinking about that. Uh, it is not like this because uh, we need, we really need to be challenged. Our life will have trouble according to the Bible, but no matter what, Lord, you are with us. Don't let this scheme of devil uh, change us or tempt us that we are okay. Let us to stay uncomfortable in our faith and let our faith to grow. Be with everyone, Lord. Father, we thank you. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Felix. Um, for today, we wanted to choose songs that um, reminded us of the comfort that God gives us. Um, when we read the passage, we all, um, yeah, just picked songs that we resonated with that reminded us of God's comfort in our lives, of how he is always with us and how we can share that with everyone today and how that also um, helps us to kind of get through some of the hard stuff that we have to face and in turn um, be able to walk with others and sit with others in their suffering. So um, yeah, this is um, a song that comforts us. I think we've sang this for a long time, for many years in our lives and um, it's just a reminder of how God is with us in and everything, even when it doesn't seem like it's going really well, even when we're in the midst of the unknown and in, in really difficult times, we know that we have hope and we have joy in knowing that Christ is with us. And so I hope that this song is comforting to you today as well in whatever you're going through. And so, yeah, let's all rise and sing this together.
Let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Ending, and I will pray the um, um, benediction over you guys. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. seated. Now is the time for offering. Uh, you can drop off your offering at the box near the, the, at the entrance, or you can deliver by e-transfer to inquiry at tcmc.ca or bring in a check to the, ch to the church office. But if you're doing that, uh, please make sure you call ahead of time to make sure someone will be at the office. Announcements. Please remember to register for the AGM through the registration form, uh, which is sent to you through the, um, in, in the Google, uh, in the WhatsApp group. Um, every person who wishes to attend the AGM on June 23rd must fill out the form. If you don't have access to that, uh, please uh, talk to Pastor Felix or maybe talk to Samuel. Next announcement is about the AGM. So the 2024 annual general meeting is on Sunday, June 23rd. It's at 2.30 in the afternoon. It's gonna be done through a Zoom platform. We encourage all members who are active to participate. But we also welcome members who are non-active and non-members to attend. The agenda is now posted at the church uh, here and on online on the church website. Uh, those are the announcements for today, and here are the worship responsibilities for next week. Uh, worship will be f uh, concluded after a moment of silent prayer. 